Hi, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, hope you're all well. So I hang around on some Micro Four Thirds uh, forums, primarily Micro Four Nerds uh, Facebook group. Almost every day I see people coming from full frame to Micro Four Thirds and they experience noise, usually in the shadows after lifting them in post. Now there's a lot of nice people in the group and usually the person asking gets their answer. However, I know that a lot of people are not in those groups though and instead use YouTube as a search engine. So I want to make a video about this. So today I want to talk about coming from full frame where your photos experience noise much faster in micro four thirds. And just a quick disclaimer, this doesn't just apply to micro four thirds, this, is, this applies to full frame, it applies to medium format and full format as well, but you just gotta compare them downwards all the time. So a full frame compared to a large format camera, you will experience the same thing. But yeah, we'll talk a little bit technical first, uh, and later in the video I will go through two approaches to get the best image quality you can uh, on a Micro Four Thirds system. The correct way and my way. Oh, and also stay until the end and I'll share a itty bitty secret about exposing to the right. All right, so I don't want to go too technical about the differences in sensor sizes and such, but just to be clear, aperture, shutter speed, ISO, focal length, they don't change between systems. What changes is how those things behave visually because of the sensor size especially depth of field and noise. For example, f1.8 is f1.8 on whichever system you're using. Same with focal length, 20 millimeters is 20 millimeters. But what affects these values are crop. Micro Four Thirds is a crop sensor, which means it crops into the frame. And that's why we often talk about equivalent focal lengths and apertures. Anyways, when you're shooting full frame, you often underexpose your image a tad bit just to protect your highlights because you know that you can bring up the shadows later in post and it still looks completely fine. And that's because the larger sensor captures more total light, more photons, so your shadows stay cleaner. And the reason this works on full frame is because the sensor has a larger surface area to capture light on, and light is photons. The more photons you capture, the better image quality you get. Simplified. However, Micro Four Thirds has roughly a quarter of the surface area on a sensor as a full frame which simply mean that you're capturing less total light in the same conditions. Less light means fewer photons, and that's where the noise starts to creep in. So when you're in post and bring up the shadows in an underexposed Micro Four Thirds photo, you will definitely see more noise quicker coming from a full frame sensor. But here's the thing, this doesn't mean that Micro Four Thirds is bad, it just means you have to treat light a little differently. And that's where I think many people go wrong. They still shoot like they have a full frame camera. And this leads to problems. When you come from full frame, you often use a narrow aperture to get a greater depth of field, like f11. Which of course means you're physically letting in less light. So let's say you're in a situation where you're using a Micro Four Thirds camera and you set your aperture to f11 because that's what you would do on your full frame. You're basically strangling the sensor for light. With Micro Four Thirds you want to capture as many photons as possible, which often means ETTR, exposed to the right. Though of course this doesn't mean you want to completely blow your highlights, but push your exposures far to the right on the histogram without clipping them. The good part about Micro Four Thirds and the bad part is that it's a crop sensor. We can use a much wider aperture and still get the same depth of field as a full frame camera at the equivalent focal length. Micro Four Thirds has a two times crop factor, which means we're basically doubling everything. 
a APS-C sensor has maybe 1.5 or 1.6 times crop factor. A 20 millimeter lens on a full frame camera is, well, 20 millimeters. But on micro four thirds, that same 20 millimeter lens gives you roughly a 40 millimeter equivalent focal length because of the crop. This means on micro four thirds, if you would want a 20 millimeter equivalent, you would have to get a 10 millimeter lens. Or let's say you want to shoot 40 millimeters full frame equivalent, you would use a 20 millimeter lens like I am on my own 5. Now exposure wise, f11 on micro four thirds is still f11. The light coming through your lens doesn't change, but the surface area on the sensor capturing that light is as we said before, much smaller than a full frame. But visually, in terms of depth of field, f11 on micro four thirds behaves more like f22 on a full frame. And this is because of the crop factor. And that's actually where another problem starts to show up, diffraction. And diffraction is not only for micro four thirds, it applies to every sensor. But when you step that far down, you begin to lose sharpness even if you have the best camera in the world and paired with the best lens in the world. But that's another topic for another video. Just be wary. So to get the same depth of field and visual look as f11 on full frame while maintaining the same field of view or focal length, you can shoot around f5.6 on micro four thirds. That's a two stop difference, which basically means you're letting in four times more light. And that extra light lets you lower your ISO by about two stops and get a cleaner image. And that's what we want. So knowing this, how do we put this into practice? Well, for me, there's two approaches. The first one being the more classic way. And the classic approach is very simple, E to TR exposed to the right. That's it. You expose as bright as you can to get as many photons captured into the shadows as possible. And this will give you the absolute best chance of recovering dark shadows. However, it is important to understand that we are limited by the sensor size. So if you're shooting a very high contrast scene, which means a very bright highlight and very dark shadows, you'll either have to bracket your shots or accept that some shadows may be lost. And again, of course, you have some wiggle room in poles to lift the shadows, but it's nowhere near as forgiving as full frame. Now, that's the classic way of shooting micro four thirds, but my approach is a little bit different because I let my shadows be dark and I completely don't care about them. If I'm in a high contrast scene, I will still expose to the right to make sure I get as many photons as possible into the sensor. But once I'm in post, I'm not forcefully trying to bring the shadows back. If anything, I often even darken them. In my type of photography, shadows are a part of the composition. They frame the scene, they guide the eye, and they build mood. So instead of fighting the shadows, I use them. It's a creative choice, of course, but I believe that many people are very scared of using bright highlights or even blown highlights and dark shadows or even crushed shadows in a photo because usually we are taught on YouTube <laughs> specifically that you should bring down the highlights and increase the shadows in post to maximize the dynamic range. And that's just how it's been for ages, like literally ages. But yeah, I think that's wrong. The creative choice is always yours in post. So maximize it and don't use default settings for everything. Anyways, I promised you a fun little ETTR secret. Even if you're planning or not planning to increase those shadows in post, it's still worth exposing to the right when you can. And of course this applies to full frame as well. Why? Because you're literally capturing more information, real photons on your sensor, which means more information in your raw file. You can even see this for yourself. Take one photo at zero EV 
and then take another photo at plus one EV and then compare the raw files, you will see that the plus one EV actually is bigger than the zero EV. And that's because the plus one EV contains more light data. So yeah, more light, more data, cleaner files, which of course means better image quality. That's the tip. Whether you shoot micro four thirds or full frame, it all comes down to how you treat light. Because in the end, that's literally what photography is, managing light and deciding what parts of your frame deserve it. The rest can stay dark. And once you stop fighting the limitations of your camera and start working with them, you'll find that noise matter a lot less than how you use the light you've got. When you're out shooting, do you try to brighten those shadows as much as you can, or do you let them fall into the dark, like I do? Let me know down in the comments. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. I appreciate it so, so much. You have no idea. But until next time, have a good day or evening, whenever you're watching this. Out.